for quite a while now. It always struck me as kind of a cool concept. But, and this was a piece of concept art that I came closest to copying. But I looked at quite a bit of concept art just to get different ideas. Um, I drew out a little bit of my scheme. I also have my concept art here. And I started out basically without really knowing what I was going to do for the desert floor, just roughing out the shape. We have a, like a slight semicircle back here. Then I started brainstorming colors. I realized that my lioness was going to get lost if I just did, I just did a tan desert floor. So I decided to use some light yellow, especially right under the section where the lioness was going to be. So we got a nice big blob of light yellow right there. And then I started building blobs of tan because I wanted to do the entire floor sideways and just get a real cracked deserty feel. That was quite a pain. Um, basically, I spent a week procrastinating on this and like one day building it when I finally just was like, okay, I need to do this. And it took me about five or six long hours of fiddling around mostly with little tiny slopes and cheese slopes just to get all these bigger chunks fitting in. I did run out of tan cheese slopes, but fortunately my brother had like a hundred and some odd, so I was able to borrow them and I think I even had, you know, five or six left over. So just had to tweak it until I could fit in all these little sections. Mostly they're all sideways, but there are a couple of tan blobs that are tiles. Those are actually like, some of them are a little sunk, a little lower than the than the rest of the tan layers, just to give a little bit more texture and details. We've also got the um, olive green stalks, which also are giving just a little bit of detail to this section of the build. I'm pretty happy with how the cracks turned out. I think in the final thing, I think you don't like notice them. I mean, as you can tell, this is like taking me a long time. You don't notice them like that much, but subconsciously it looks, it does look really cool. Um, so yes, again, this took me a long time. It was very tedious and very slow work, um, but here we are getting toward the end here and finishing up this sideways cracked desert section. So after we finished that, then we went into the wall, and basically for the wall, um, I just had to design one section and just repeat it. <laughs> so here I am designing the first section using a just ordinary lattice window, but I am turning it sideways because, I mean, first rule of building, right? If you can turn it sideways, then turn it sideways. It looks cooler sideways, <laughs> no matter what it is. Anyways, I designed that piece and then a pillar to go next to it and then I just repeated those two several times. I also used a favorite arch technique of mine which is these cheese slope arches but I discovered that apparently there are like three different molds of these one times six arches that go over the cheese slopes and there's one of them that works pretty well with the cheese slopes it's actually even a little loose maybe and they tend to fall out. There's another mold that's a little tight then there's another mold that's like really tight, it like really stresses the bricks. I, like to my eye, I can't see the difference. So I was just like experimenting and figuring out which one would work. And it was kind of a pain. I did have, did not have enough of the good ones. So I had to use some. So some of these one times six arches are pretty stressed. But anyways, I managed to get them in there somewhere or another. And then went to work on this middle section, which is basically um, a really elaborate, entranceway which probably doesn't make as much sense as it should because theoretically the lion should be coming out of the cage not out of a, a really nice arch back here but I wanted from like from the visual perspective I definitely wanted you to be looking from behind the minifigure at the lion or the lioness and I also wanted you to be of course looking at this ornate arch so I just ignored the fact that it's that the line should be in a cage and let it come out of this um, fancy arch archway here. Then I moved on to the walls, the top walls of this, and um, the people are going to be basically behind these walls. And I was able to uh, use some hinge plates to attach 
um, the curved sections on the bottom. Of course, they're all attached down at the bottom. Uh, they're all attached to the base using bars and, and clips and stuff. Uh, it's a little messy back there. But um, the hinge plates on top were really helps to make it look a little sturdier. Then I started designing the pillars for the next layer. layer. Um, these have uh, basically like a red drape coming down the pillar and um, I started with, with the top of the pillar and then from there built down I wanted a slight slope basically a slight slope out and that was a little hard to hard to get in fact um, the, these these slopes are under a good deal of pressure to like keep their shape and they didn't necessarily keep their shape all the way through my final photos session <laughs> but it, it worked pretty well anyways once I designed one I basically just repeated that three times so I have four of these pillar sections and then I also designed this uh, brick bent um, stack of bricks that will hold all four of those pillars together and then I moved on to the two pillars that will be in the middle. This is like a one piece balcony that the idea basically is you enter this fighting pit probably from the topmost layer level and then you come down onto this little balcony and you come down the stairs on either side and that's how you fill the galleries. So here we are building the stairs on either side and using some upside down flick fire missiles to get the railings right. Then I went back there to attach all these together. As you can see, we've graduated to a bigger table. Um, not quite big enough, honestly, but bigger. And back here we have basically a conglomerate of pillar brick and hinge plates and technique bricks um, keeping hopefully keeping everything together honestly this part is all rather fragile because it's behind the base so it's not really attached very well to the base um, and then we also have the brick bent semicircle back there that is under so much stress um, and as long as it's up there it like keeps everything together but if it starts to slip, it like brings everything down with it. I had to rebuild that whole section at least three times, including on the photography table. So after that, we started building minifigures and I got these minifigure, uh, these platforms here for the minifigures to stand on and also added a little bit of support for those back pillars. Um, as you can see back around here, a lot of filler brick um, coming off the base, unfortunately. Didn't think that through when I designed the size of my base, did I? And we have also this section with all the bricks all under a lot of stress and a lot of stress to attach them to the base as well. And you may have been wondering what these two black rectangles up front were for. So when I first like got the idea for this and was just throwing out concepts, I wanted to be looking through a tunnel and like see the gladiator and behind him see the amphitheater full of people, right? I really like that idea, so I wanted to keep it, but I did realize that it was going to, I wasn't going to be able to get a wide enough angle to get as much of the amphitheater as I wanted. But I did want to build that anyways, and so we basically have these two shots, one from the top where you can see all the people, and one from the bottom where you can see a little bit of the people and you see mostly the gladiator. And I used this um, big uh, stone technique, which I really enjoyed it. I think it's the first time I've ever done it. Um, it's fairly simple and just use black in between the stones, um, but but it does look really nice. At least I thought it looked really nice. And the arch also was a lot of fun to build. Use some flex tubes to get the right curve there. By this time, the back of our build is just so tall that I'm having to build massive chunks, as you can see, of filler just to raise the next level uh, up high enough. 
I use so much filler in this build. Um, and then we have here the next level, which is just basically a bunch of arches. Some of these have lattices behind them, some of them don't. I didn't think it mattered enough to like to worry about borrowing tons of lattices from my brothers. Um, and then the last thing to design here was the awnings that go on top. Um, once I designed one, I basically just had to copy it and uh, then attach them all, which was a bit of a challenge. You can see I basically used anything that worked <laughs> to attach these, some clips, um, some mixel joints, sometimes two mixel joints, sometimes just one, basically whatever works. Here's a combination of mixel joints and clips and even a hinge plate down there. Um, however, these things would get on there. That's how I put them on there. So as you can see, back here in the back, we have a total mess. Um, filler brick, just anything I could do to get that up there. The whole thing comes in, in two sections. This whole back section comes off, so I use those two sections to bring it downstairs. But it's about time to turn this thing around. <laughs>